guys, so excuse <clears throat> this if I do this all video long. Uh, my sore throat that I had like a week and a half ago is now a awful cough that has been here for a week and a half and it is so gross and I have to constantly clear my throat and cough. So if I'm doing that throughout the video, please excuse me. something that I get asked questions about all the time and that is applying to nursing school. What do I do for T's? What did I do for HESI? What did I do for applications? Yada 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 so on and so forth. So I thought I would make this video about my experience with applying to nursing school. So when I wanted to go to nursing school I knew that I wanted to get a bachelor's in nursing so I needed to make sure that I wasn't applying to any associate degree nursing programs because there are differences. There is an associate RN and there's a bachelor's RN that you can get and I wanted a bachelor's. Now the reason I wanted a BSN over just an ADN is because majority of hospitals are now wanting to hire BSNs over ADNs and so I wanted to make myself look more eligible also I get a lot more education with that degree and also sometimes it is quicker to move up to charge nurse with a BSN degree over an ADN now an ADN and a BSN are both registered nurses they both have the ability to do the same thing uh, it's just those are just the only reasons that I chose a BSN over an ADN ADNs make great nurses just as good. Uh, I, that's just my personal reasons. That just want to throw that out there. So I knew I wanted to go to a BSN program. Now many of you guys ask why is my nursing program only two years? Well nursing school is only two years. Whether you're getting an associates you go for two years or you're getting your bachelor's the actual nursing part of your degree is only two years. A bachelor's degree is four years of education so you have two years of pre and then two years of your actual degree. Therefore people can transfer to a different nursing program. So let's say you went to like UCLA for your prerequisites and then you went to UT for your nursing degree. That's two years here and two years here to get one four-year bachelor's degree. So my nursing degree is actually a four-year degree, but the actual nursing part is only two years. Now because I have a previous bachelor's degree in health, I've already graduated college from once, therefore I don't have to take the prereqs because I already have a degree. And so I'm just going to the two years of nursing school and then I will get another bachelor's degree, if that makes sense. So just think of it as I already have my prereqs out of the way, I've already done my two years of prereqs with my previous degree, I just have to go two more years to nursing school to get my second bachelor's degree. So I hope that makes sense. A lot of people ask the reason why I chose traditional track over an accelerated program. So there, my school does offer both. If you, you can only go to the accelerated program if you have a previous bachelor's degree. The accelerated program is 15 months. And then the traditional track program is two years. So there's a little bit of a difference. Traditional track are mainly people who do not already have a previous bachelor's degree. They are just going two years prereqs and then transfer into nursing school and do two years there and get one, four years, one degree as a nurse. Uh, however, I am a person with a previous bachelor's degree in a traditional track program. Now the reason I chose traditional over accelerated is because I did my first degree so fast. I did my first bachelor's degree in two and a half years. It was the most chaotic time of my life. I was taking an absurd amount of hours while working full time and I just did not want to do that to myself again. And so I quit my job for nursing school. However, I do still have income. I do still have income. Let me repeat. I do still have income. However, I also use financial aid because uh, not only to pay for my school, to pay for my actual bills for school because my free school from the Hazelwood Act has run out. I have no more hours, therefore I actually have to pay for school. So I use financial aid to not only pay for my tuition and fees and all of that stuff, but I also use it to cover a small, small portion of my rent. And so it, co it doesn't even cover half, I don't even use it to cover half of my rent. So with my income, I pay 
uh, like two thirds of my rent and then all of the rest of my bills with the income that I have. So that is how I am not working technically at a, like an, a go to job, like I have to actually go to work job and I'm in nursing school. So I get questions on that all of the time. I am not just solely dependent on financial aid. It doesn't even cover half of my rent because I have to use so much of it to pay for my tuition. So let's get that straight. So that is how I am doing it. Do I think you can work in nursing school? Absolutely. I have multiple friends in my class who have jobs and who work all the time. I personally did not want to do that. That is just a personal preference. I think nursing school is one of the hardest things I've ever done in my entire life and I just did not want to stress myself out with a job, having to go to a job and not being able to focus or if I needed to study or I needed to do homework or I needed to do this or that or whatever. So that is why I quit my job. However, it is totally possible to work in nursing school. You just have to really have really good time management skills and be able to de-stress a lot. So I feel like I'm off topic. Okay, so I chose the traditional track over the accelerated program because I did not want to do a super fast degree. Again, I already did it once. I wanted to take things slower, especially because nursing school is so hard. And so that is why I chose the traditional track program. So when it came to a time to apply to nursing school, I wanted to stay in the state of Texas because not only did I want to pay in-state tuition, but I also am from Texas and want to stay here. And so I applied to four different nursing schools in Texas, in different cities all around Texas, but in Texas. Now I'm not going to give the name of those schools just for privacy reasons, but they all, all are in Texas. There we go. And so I graduated with my first bachelor's degree in December of 2014, and I took the whole, whole spring semester off of school. I only worked. And then in the fall of 2015 is when I had planned or wanted to start nursing school. So uh, I think most of my applications, I think the last one was due in like January so like January of 2015 I think was when I did my last application so deciding what schools to apply for when I was looking at schools to apply for nursing school I really looked at what all criteria they needed for me to be accepted so for instance did I need to take the T's or the HESI did I need to have references did I need to have a uh, essays, did I need to have certain classes, all of that kind of stuff. So I needed to actually make sure that I met all the requirements to be able to actually be accepted into the school. And the second thing I looked at was the exam, the NCLEX pass rate. There's statistics on like first attempt pass rate for schools and a school that was at like 60% I didn't want to go to because in my opinion uh, I wouldn't be allowing myself to get the best possible education because obviously there's some problems with that school with the first time attempt people trying to pass the NCLEX and the NCLEX is the exam you have to take to be to actually become an RN. And so just to give you a basis, the school that I am at currently has a 98.8% first attempt pass rate for the NCLEX, which is outstanding, which means the education is pretty phenomenal that 98.8% of students pass the NCLEX on their first attempt, which is awesome. And so that was really, really important to me. So I applied to four schools and I had priorities of the ones that I wanted to go to, like listing, you know, this would be my top priority or this is my first priority school that I wanted to and uh, this school I would love to go to just as equally however it's just my last pick if that makes sense and I don't think that means degrading any other school it is just personal preference so in the application process I did have to have references and I used people who I truly thought would help me or help the schools uh, get a better picture of who I am in a health perspective. So because I did go to a medical style of high school, I used one of my prof my professors from there. I did believe, I think I used an academic advisor because obviously she knows how crazy my first degree was and she has a really good insight into the kind of student that I am. And then I don't remember who I used for my last reference but I did have one more reference. Now, uh, some of the schools required essays, and so 
I think I think the majority of schools wanted an essay about like why would you want to be a nurse and you just need to be honest tell them what what was that point in your life that made you decide that you wanted to be a nurse for me it's the only thing I've ever wanted to be ever I've all, I mean not necessarily a nurse but in the medical field when I was four years old I told my parents I wanted to be a doctor and uh, it wasn't up until actual going into college that I changed my mind from doctor to nurse and I is the best decision ever I'm so I'm so ecstatic with my decision and I think uh, going to the medical high school and confirming that this is what I want to do I had a very it wasn't like I'm gonna come into your nursing school and then freak out and realize this isn't what I want I had a very clear understanding that no matter what this is what I think I'm supposed to do with my life and be and um, I was able to portray that in an essay so those are two things that I did have to do as part of my application process also I needed to make sure that there wasn't any crazy classes that they needed for prereqs and so that I made sure that I met all the prerequisite classes that they did need now let's talk about GPA and grades so when I was applying to nursing school you know I was very scared because because I worked full time and because I took an insane amount of hours with my first degree, I did not make all A's in every single class. Therefore, my GPA showed that I did not make all A's in every single class. I have friends who in their first two years of college did have a 4.0 and that wasn't me. So I was really scared with applying to nursing school because I figured, you know, I don't have a 4.0 GPA, they're not going to let me in. And so I was very scared with that. So while yes, grades are extremely, extremely important, I'm not gonna lie, you do have to have a good GPA, you really, you really, truly, honestly do. I mean, I, I'm sure there are people who have 3.0s that got into nursing school, but I haven't personally heard anybody with a GPA of that that got into nursing school. So I'm not going to lie to you there. You do have to have the grades to get in, but that just means you have to study and work really hard in your prerequisite classes so that you're able to accomplish that dream of getting into nursing school. Now, uh, the nursing schools that I applied to, not all of them, but most of them had an overall GPA and then they had a science GPA. So they took literally every single class you've ever had and that was your actual GPA. And then they only took your science courses and had that as a GPA. Now thankfully, my science GPA was I think higher than my overall GPA. And that's because one, I absolutely love science. It's my favorite subject. It's so easy for me to understand. And I made really, really good grades excuse me, and I made really good grades in all of my science classes. So my science GPA alone was a lot better than my overall GPA. So there's that to think about as well. Now a lot of the time you can go on to the nursing school's website, I think most of them have this at least, or at least my school does, and you can go and look at statistics from the previous class that just recently got accepted. So I will share with you guys the um, statistics from my class who got accepted. This is for July of 2015. Now I did not start school in July of 2015. I actually started school in August of 2015, but this just gives you statistics from the people that are in my class and the ones that did start in July. We all got accepted at the same time. So these are the statistics. It said the college received 324 applications for 88 seats on the on the campus. Among the students enrolled, the average overall GPA was a 3.72, the average nursing science GPA was a 3.77, and the average accumulative emission HESI score was a 90.6. So that is just statistics for uh, my my class that got admitted. There are other statistics from the other classes or the most recently admitted class they have their statistics on there as well. So you can see and I'm not gonna lie to you it is very competitive getting into nursing school. So you have your grades and you have your references and you have your essays and you have your prereqs done and then we come to the T's and the HESI. Now uh, different schools that I applied to wanted different tests. So some of the schools I applied to wanted the T's and some of the schools I applied to wanted the HESI. I said that really country. <laughs> No, okay, I had to take both and these are admission exams and to me they're pretty much like an SAT It's pretty much literally like taking an SAT again They just kind of want to know your general knowledge on a lot of different subjects now the T's you are not able to pick what categories 
you test over, but on the T's, you are allowed to pick the subjects that you test over. So when I took the HESI, I chose not to test over physics because I absolutely hate physics. And the schools that I wanted that needed the HESI did not require you to take physics. So that's why I didn't take it. Now studying for both of these exams, I do not have my study books anymore because I sold them to other people that wanted them. However, I literally just went to Barnes & Nobles and found the first study guide that I saw. I reviewed all the information, did all the practice questions that were in the books, and that's literally the only thing I used to study for both of these exams. I think I started about a week in advance for both tests, studying for both. Because when I took the T's test, I was still in college, so I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time studying on it. And then when I took the HESI exam, I had recently just graduated college, and so I, again, I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time studying. So I just started studying about a week in advance for both tests and I just used the study guides that I had bought from Barnes and Nobles and that was the only thing I used to study. If I can find a picture and or a link for either of those books I will link it down below if I can find it. Now taking both of those exams I was super nervous of course but I did make a 90 on both of them. I, th I don't it was like a 90 point something on both of the exams. I don't remember what I actually made. It was so long ago. And from what I was told, a 90 and above is considered a competitive score. Now some ex some schools um, obviously might accept lower than that. I was just told personally by more than one person that a score of 90 or above was made you a competitive applicant. Just obviously this is just what I have been told there could definitely be differences and I am sure there have been people with lower and higher scores accepted into nursing school. And I want to forewarn you that applying to nursing school is expensive. You have to pay to take the T's and you have to pay to take the HESI. You have to pay to send transcripts. You have to pay to send everything. And so I want, for the four schools that I applied to, I want to say I spent almost over $500 applying and paying for everything that I had to do. So it is not cheap applying to these schools, so make sure that the ones that you do apply to, you actually want to go to. And so that's just a forewarning. So after I submitted all of my applications and everything with them, it was a waiting game. Now the first school to accept me was happened in April, and it was actually from my uh, last pick of a school. Now like I said, this does not mean I did not like the school, this does not mean that I discredit the school, it is simply the last choice on my list that I would have wanted to go to. I obviously would not have applied to the school if I did not truly think it was an amazing school, and that I truly did not want to go there. I would not have applied. It's just a preference list. Now they were the, le the first ones to accept me. Now uh, obviously this was kind of a scary thing because a lot of the times the schools accept you and then they give you a date that you have to accept your acceptance by. So this was kind of scary because I had three other schools up in the air waiting to see if I was going to get into them or not. So I did not immediately accept my acceptance. And then about a couple weeks later, I want to say like two or three weeks later, I got my acceptance letter from two other schools. And now this was my second and third choice of schools that I wanted to go to. So everybody but my top pick had accepted me into their school. And all of them obviously gave me a date to accept my acceptance. Now, obviously, since all three of them had accepted me, I was going to go with my second pick. And, oh, I want to add this in. My second pick of a school was the only school that actually interviewed me in person. I had to go to their school and have an interview. And it was super easy. It was questions like, how do you handle stress? How do you, how do you... Hold on. Hello. Hey. So my second pick was the only school that actually interviewed me and uh, it was super easy and the interview went great. So anyways, out of the, obviously, since all three of those had accepted me, I was going to accept the acceptance of my second pick and I, because I had not heard anything from my top pick. Then, unfortunately, I did hear something from my very first pick and it was that I got waitlisted. So being waitlisted by a school means that they want you they would like to accept you, they just don't have the space for you, if that makes sense. So like, if a school is only accepting 50 applicants, uh, they accepted the first 50 that they wanted, and then they have like this other group of people that they would like to accept if one of those people declines. 
Does that make sense? For my top pick, I got waitlisted, which isn't an awful thing. When I when it happened to me, I was really embarrassed because I felt like I wasn't good enough, I was stupid, and I, did, I wasn't good enough to get into my school. And that is not what it means at all. It means that they want you. I didn't get told no. I got told, we want you, we just don't have a place for you. And so I, they said that the wait list could be as long as up to the first day of school, which is a really long time. And so I was like, okay, well, I obviously have to go to nursing school. I didn't apply to other, the, all these other schools to not go to nursing school. So I put off accepting my acceptance to my second pick up until the very last day. So the very last day to accept my acceptance was May 4th. And so on that day, I accepted that I was my acceptance to the school and I had to pay $200 deposit for accepting my acceptance. On May 5th, I got a phone call that my top pick wanted me and had a spot for me and offered me the acceptance into the school. So it was kind of like, a, oh my gosh, I just spent $200 that I'm not gonna get back. But then again, I did not care at all because I got to go to my number one pick of a nursing school and I was so ecstatic and I was so blessed and thankful that that happened to me. And I have a whole video on this that you can go watch on my channel. Uh, it was just a really cool, and I kind of give you a background story of why it was so awesome and, and amazing for me to have that experience. And so, needless to say, I did, again, I did get into my number one pick and I was very blessed and fortunate to get in. And now I am in nursing school and like I said, Said, I still think it's one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do in my entire life. I do make updates about my nursing school experience that you can go and watch freely. They're all over my channel and I try to do one at least every semester and uh, either midway or at the end so that you guys can see how my nursing school experience has been. And in the end, if I had to look over what I think made me a competitive applicant, it was the fact that I had good T's and HESI scores, it was the fact that I had a good science GPA and a not horrible overall GPA. I think that having um, experience in the medical field, I interned my senior year of high school for an entire year in labor and delivery. I had that experience. I was a part of a future nurses association with my first degree. I was in that organization. I also think the fact that I did finish my degree so fast showed that I'm a dedicated student and uh, I think that made me competitive. I think maybe my references could have helped me I think a lot of things kind of played into my favor since I didn't in fact have a 4.0 GPA and so I have a ton of volunteer experience I uh, have a ton of work experience you know some schools aren't just focused on your GPA they're focused on your overall character and who you are as a person and not just solely what you do at school and so I think uh, that could have helped me get accepted into nursing school so I hope this doesn't discourage anybody. I know that when I was applying to nursing school, it was one of the most nerve-wracking things ever because you just don't know what's to come. And you know, this is you've worked your whole life up to get to this point, and so it's a big deal. So I really hope that this doesn't discourage you, but that it gives you a really good insight into what my personal experience was applying to nursing school. Everybody's could be different and that's totally okay. Watch more videos if you need more information or more experience or other people's experience. So good luck with your process to applying to nursing school. I hope this helped you and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. I love ya. Mwah.